Welcome to Electro Online. This next problem on the JE Advanced Test, Paper 1, 2022, is kind of confusing. I had a lot of problems with this one. I didn't like the way it was worded, and it was, I think, somewhat misleading. And so I went over this, trying to figure out how to work this problem. So let's go ahead and try to, uh, to read it and see how we can maybe improve the understanding of what it is that they're actually trying to ask. It says here that the binding energy of, an, of nucleons, now a nucleon can be either a, posit, a, uh, a proton or a nucleon, so they're called nucleons, so we're talking about either protons or nucleons. So the binding energy in a, of nucleons in a nucleus can be affected by the pairwise Coulomb repulsions. Of course, that's only true for the protons. That's not true for the neutrons. The neutrons do not repel each other. So that's the first place where it's kind of confusing. They should have said protons. Assume that all nucleons are uniformly distributed inside the nucleus. So if we have a big nucleus, we have protons, we have neutrons, and they're kind of uniformly distributed. That means you don't have a lot of protons on one side, a lot of neutrons on the other side. They're just evenly mixed. And then they said, let the binding energy of a proton be E sub B P. So there's a symbol that they use to indicate the binding energy of a proton. But now you're sitting here thinking we have a nucleus with lots of protons and lots of neutrons. So really what they're probably saying is the average binding energy of a proton is E sub B. And the binding energy of a neutron should be E sub B with an N. So we have N for neutron, P for proton. Don't quite like that. I think we should have said E sub N and E sub P. In the nucleus, again, we're talking about the average binding energy of a neutron and an average binding energy of a proton. Now, the binding energy of a neutron and a proton, if we ignore repulsive forces, are exactly the same. But because protons repel each other, then the more protons you have in the nucleus, the more the repulsive forces will fight back against the binding energy, the forces, the, the, the strong forces or the strong nuclear forces caused by the binding energy. All right. So now they give us four statements and they ask us which of the following statements is or are correct. So the four statements are that the difference between the average binding energy of a proton and the average binding energy of a neutron is proportional to z times z minus 1, where z is the atomic number of the atom. For B, it says the difference between the binding energy or the average binding energy of the proton minus the average binding energy of the neutron is proportional to A to the minus one third, where A is the mass number of the nucleus. Then they say that the difference between the two binding energies is positive, and finally, that the binding energy of a proton increases if the nucleus undergoes a beta decay emitting a positron. B and, uh, C and D are the easy ones to answer, so let's start with those. First of all, which one is bigger? Is the binding energy of the proton bigger than the binding energy of the neutron so that the difference is positive? The answer is, of, of course, no, because the binding energy of the protons is reduced by the Coulomb repulsive forces. So the binding energy between the neutrons is always going to be bigger than the binding energy of the protons. So therefore, we know that this is not a correct answer. Because the binding energy of protons is reduced, made smaller by the repulsive forces, the Coulomb forces. On D, let's take a look at what a beta decay looks like. So we have a proton. It emits a beta particle, taking the positive charge away. That leaves us with a neutron. So after a beta decay, we have less protons meaning we have less repulsive forces between the protons, which means that the binding energy, the average binding energy of protons should go up because there's less of them. The more protons they are, the lower the average binding energy of the protons. The less protons they are, the higher the binding energy between the protons because there's less repulsive forces. So here it says, does the binding energy increase when have the beta decay emitting a positron? The answer is yes, because now there's less protons, so the average binding energy of the proton should increase. So that is actually a correct statement. Now I'm going to A and B. They're a little bit more... Ah, again, I don't like the way the answers are written, but we can think about it like this. If we have a single proton, then there's no pairs, zero pairs of protons. 
So this is the way I, I thought about it. If there are two protons, then there's one pair. If there's three protons, then there's one pair between those two, a pair between those two, and a pair between those two, so then there's three pairs. If there's four protons, then we have one, two, no, one, two, three, four, five, uh, I'll take that back. So we have one, two, three, then we have four, five, and then another color here, we have six. So with four protons, we have six pairs. Whoop, different color, six pairs. Then with five protons, three times two, four times three, that we'll have 12 pairs. How do we calculate that? Well, we have one, two, three, four. Then we have five, six, seven, because that one is already counted, so five, six, seven. Then we have eight, nine. Well, it looks like we have 10. Does that make sense? 10. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. All right, so in that case, we have 10 pairs. Now you may wonder, why am I doing that? Well, it turns out that we can find a formula to describe that. And the formula is that the number of pairs is equal to z times z minus 1, oops, that should be minus, divided by 2. Let's see if that works. If there is one, one proton, 1 times 0 is 0, 0 pairs. If there's two protons, it's 2 times 1 divided by 2, which is 1. Three pairs, you have 3 times 2, which is 6 divided by 2, which is 3, 3 pairs. If there's four protons, we go 4 times 3, which is 12, divided by, divided by 2, which is 6. If there's 5 protons, it's 5 times 4, which is 20, divided by 2, which is 10, and so forth. So you can see that this equation here tells us the number of pairs of protons we're going to have, and it's the number of pairs of protons that determine the average binding energy because the more pairs you have, the more Coulomb repulsive forces. So that means that the binding energy of neutrons is not affected by that, but the binding energy of the protons is affected by this pairwise repulsive force, which can be described by z times z minus 1 over 2. So therefore, the binding energy should be proportional to z times z minus 1. So therefore, that makes this a correct statement. Finally, is the binding energy proportional to a to the minus 1 third? So therefore, we need to kind of look at it this way. So let's say we have a bunch of protons and neutrons. And of course, this would be a three-dimensional clump of nucleons, protons and neutrons. So then you can imagine that you have the radius of a single one, like this. And you can also imagine that the volume is equal to 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. Now that would be the total radius, like this. So which means that the radius would be proportional to the volume to the one-third. I'm simply taking the cube of both sides and I'm getting rid of the constant four-thirds pi, so I have that proportionality. So we know that the radius of a clump of nucleons is going to be proportional to volume to the one-third but the volume is going to be proportional to the number of nucleons that you have. So therefore, we have the volume is proportional to the number of nucleons, which is presented by the letter A. Uh, let's see here, right here. A is the mass number of nucleons, which means the number of nucleons. So that means that the radius can be proportional to the number of nucleons to the one-third power. Then, we can say that the relationship between the two is that the radius, total radius, is going to be equal to the radius of 1 times the number to the one-third power. So you can see that as A increases, if there's 50 or 100 nucleons, then the total radius is going to be bigger and bigger and bigger, but to this relationship right here, or that R, the, the radius of 1, is therefore going to be equal to R divided by a to the one-third, which is equal to r times a to the minus one-third. So the radius of one is going to be proportional 
to a to the minus one-third. So the radius of one nucleon is going to be proportional to a to the minus one-third, and that is the average radius of the nucleons, which then would be the average binding energy of the nucleons, and therefore you can see that the, the binding energy, the average binding energy of the nucleons controlled by the protons is going to be equal to a to the minus one-third because the protons are going to be pushed farther away, not just by the other protons, but by the neutrons in the nucleus, and so then the average radius is going to be proportional to a to the minus one-third, which means that, I guess my red pen here, that B is the correct answer because the binding energy, the average binding energy, is going to be proportional to a to the minus one-third, meaning the amount of nucleons you're going to have in the nucleus. Again, I don't like this particular question. It is very nebulous of how it's worded. The expression right here, I'm not quite sure if I have the meaning of that correct, and so I'm a little disappointed, but if I was doing the test, this is the way I would answer it, and I did get the correct answers by using that principle, and that is how I did it. <laughs> and this one I had to do a little bit of guessing, that's right. <laughs>